let's talk about adult beverages and the, the level, level of party. party. Uh, now, <laughs> this is completely up to you, but I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you the following. And that is, uh, once people get blitzed, they tend to not do such a good job with putting in the dreads. You'll have half a head full of loosely back combed, you know, crappy looking dreads. Things won't end well. You're probably going to have to comb them out and, um, you know, redo them. Which means ordering another pizza and inviting everybody out again, and uh, that's no fun. Actually, that, that would be fun, but you might want to save the party for like an after party. Um, and then while you're actually having the dreads put in, stick to like soda pop. And uh, I'm just saying this from experience, a dread party that we hosted almost ended in disaster when uh, a young girl that had had a little too much to drink began twirling a comb in a section of undreaded hair. And um, she wound it down. We're still doing it. Is this normal? Mm -hmm. Is this good? Yeah, she won't see it there. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Are you coming out here? Is this three fourths or like from this side to this side? Yeah, the mark. Okay, and that's the start. Oh well, mark. then. Yeah. And that's the three fourths. Yeah. Oh well. Oh my god, you're it's okay. It. And. I don't know if you've ever wound a comb in hair before, but it doesn't just unwind like you might imagine it would. I thought that was going to unwind so easily. It was stuck. This is really bad. So we're sitting there like picking at it and pulling at it and everybody else is pretty wasted too. You so, there! Um, <clears throat> Let me get out! We're laughing. I know how to get out! I don't get, I don't get, I don't get any more laughing about him. <laughs> I just you know ruined your dreads, Sloan. I have to laugh to make myself not cry. That was when Sloane was getting her dreads. Poor Sloane, man. I mean, she was hating me, too, because she blamed it on me. Well, you have no reason to be mad at me. I'm not mad. I'm in pain, my love. I wasn't even the one twirling the comb, but I was laughing my ass off because that shit was funny. No, no! You there! Let me get it out. Did you hear what I said? You over there! Yes. Keep it away! <laughs> I know how to get it out! I yeah. So anyway, we did get the comb out. I yeah. We didn't have to cut much hair. Um, but it, it, you know, so anyway, moral of the story is, all things in moderation, as always. And you might want to consider saving the celebratory party to after the, um, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Celebratory. Hmm. Just forget I said that. All right, so have you had a chance yet to think about what it would look like if you had four people working on your dreads? There it is. Um, sorry. Basically, you got um, one person on each side, and then you have two people in the back, kind of like on the corners there. And um, this works good. Everybody can see the TV. Uh, the person getting their hair dreaded usually sits on like a cushion or a really low chair, like one of those TV rocking chairs. And um, that's good, you know, because the, the main thing there is that the people that are back combing can rest their elbows on their knees, okay? So they're like leaning forward, and they got their weight like that. And then they can just move, see, like, like, do like this, you know, put down here. And um, they'll be able to, to last and be able to do it a lot longer and be comfortable. If they're kind of, if they're standing and they're sitting like that, their shoulders and everything are going to be all tight and sore, you know, after like 30 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> and then you're going to have to switch them out and rotate, you know. So I think that's helpful. Um, <clears throat> it's the best way we've found to do it. If you guys find a better way to do it that's more comfortable, let us know. And we'll tell people about that way. Oh yeah, about your dread party and your friends. Keep in mind that putting the dreads in is not easy. Okay, it's not rocket science, but it's not physically easy. You know, it's, it's somewhat demanding. So let your friends know that you really appreciate the work that they put into your dreads. Get them a little gift, or uh, maybe take them to dinner or something like that um, for helping you out. But that's really only the beginning of, of the, the debt that you owe them. Um, and I, I think that the only way to really pay that debt is to keep your dreads and let them grow and mature and, and become awesome dreadlocks. You tell them that you want to get dreads and you tell them that you want them to help and they're thinking, yeah, oh, they look cool with dreads, you know, that's awesome. And they get this picture immediately of these, you know, like dope ass dreads that you're gonna have. They want to see their work become awesome dreads. So give them that. And um, they'll be really glad that they helped you out. And then a final note on that. If you need to cut your dreads for some reason, if you cannot keep them because of your job or because of some lifestyle change or whatever, let them know before you cut your dreads and talk to them about it and say, man, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm gonna have to cut my dreads, it's not working out. 
don't just cut them and then they find out through somebody else that the dreads they helped put in got cut off. Because more likely than not, they feel some like spiritual attachment to your dreads. And um, you know, just, if nothing else, they work their ass off to put them in and, um, and you're cutting them off. So you owe them that. Let them know that, that you're gonna cut them if you have to, okay? <laughs> Your scalp is important when you're getting dreads, okay? It's just as important as your hair. Because if it's not happy, your dreads aren't going to be happy. Scalps are like old men, okay? They're pasty, they're hairy, and they don't like change. When you get dreads, your scalp is going to notice at least two changes. And, depending on your scalp, it may get a little cranky. So, there's a couple things that you can do to um, chill your scalp out and make it happier. All right? The first change is going to be how often it gets stimulated by a brush or a comb, okay? Which right now, that's probably once a day or more. But after you put in your dreads, you're going to stop combing and brushing. You didn't know that? Your scalp is going to notice this change. Without that stimulation, it might get uh, itchy and it might produce dandruff. The scalp needs stimulation like that to properly exfoliate. So there's a couple things that you can do. One, you can gra gradually reduce the stimulation before you get dreads. So for about two weeks before you do it, you can brush and comb your hair without rubbing your scalp so much. All right, so that'll give it less stimulation, help it adjust. The second thing you can do is to continue stimulating it after you get dreads using a head honcho. And um, a head honcho. And it looks like an ordinary hair pick. But in fact, there's some really unique things about it that make it very ideal for head honchoing, okay? And when I want to say head honchoing, I just mean... It feels good. Basically what you're doing is you're scratching your head with the uh, hair pick, okay? And this doesn't seem like rocket science, but this is unusually well suited for doing so. The points on here are pointy enough to scratch and stimulate your scalp, but they're not pointy enough to rough your scalp up and, and tear it and scrape it and stuff like that. Now you would assume that that would be part of every hair pick to have smooth tips, but it's not. A lot of them have a sharp edge right at the top. Like you had the rounded edge and then they cut it off. Really, really great, really great. Great. Um, has the right size pins, the right spacing between the pins. There's no sharp edges. And um, it also folds. <laughs> so you can put it in your pocket and you can pull it out. And you can be like It also, you can stick it like that. See the pins will actually go through the dreads if they need to when you're like that, um, especially at the roots, but through most dreads they'll go through the body because of the, the size of them, which is really ideal. But anyway, this one, you can pop it out like that and you can be an insect. Okay, you see that? Excellent. Yeah, well, I like um, insects, but, but not that much. So take that out. After you put your dreads in, usually about at like week two or three, you start to get this urge to run a brush or a comb through your hair and across your scalp and it gets worse and worse and you just want to comb it oh, like so bad, right? And you just imagine how good it would feel. Well, it really does feel that good. So, I'll make it rough. I think you'll really like that. You can check locally and see if you can find something that will work. And if not, we have one that will work on the site and you can get it. Another added advantage to stimulating the scalp is that you're actually increasing blood flow to the hair follicle, which is believed to help the hair grow faster and thicker just by having more blood there. Faster and thicker. A lot of people recommend like massagers and stuff to vibrate and everything like that. Um, but anything that brings blood to the follicles will do that. So it'll help your hair grow a little bit faster and thicker. Faster and thicker just by having more blood there. And uh, that's good stuff, okay? The next change is gonna be your washing routine. But first, I need you to click Dreadhead Dread Vlog Part Two. C, right over there on the side. But it might not be out yet, in which case, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. But you can subscribe and then you'll get a message when it comes out. Hey.